بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وثانك الله سبحانه وتعالى All praise is due to him May his peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you and I say assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Alhamdulillah that uh, we are able uh, to uh, see each other again this year. This is uh, a big favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of that, you know, we have to be grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every one of us to fast this month of Ramadan. And may he accept it from every one of us. Ameen. Ameen. Uh, I also extend my greetings to our Imam, our Sheikh, as well as uh, Dr. Uh, Sharifa Balogun and all the uh, members of the community. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy uh, to allow us, as we see each other in this life, to allow us to meet again on the day of resurrection and the paradise. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. Uh, the topic, Islamic ideals and the Muslim today, why the disparity? Uh, I was given, you know, option, you know, you may, I mean, that, you know, if I wish, you know, I could uh, treat this topic. And if I wish, you know, I could treat, treat another topic. But I think, you know, uh, the reason why they chose or uh, the, uh, they sent me this topic, I mean, uh, because it's very important. So that's why, you know, I decided, you know, to uh, to treat it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for me and allow all my audience, you know, to be able to understand me. Uh, Allahumma amin. Islamic ideals, let us define Islam. We know the definition. And it is total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we, I mean, we always say this definition, but we need to think and ponder over it more and more. When we say total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means that, you know, we have our own will too. Like, for example, my will is not to fast today. I don't, I'm not interested. Why should I, you know, why, why should I suffer hunger and thirst? My will is not to pray Maghrib. You know, why, you know, I mean, I, I mean, it's easy for me, you know, to sleep, you know, and to rest or to relax or to have fun. That's my will. But as a Muslim, I have to submit my will totally to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what makes you and I Muslims. If we don't have that understanding, that means, you know, we don't know what we are practicing. Islam is a contract. I mean, indeed, or rather, uh, it's a life term contract that we have signed. And we have to live to expectation. You know, we are expected as, as Muslims, you know, to uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to practice Islam and to be a true believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is just. Um, Oh, that was uh, my introduction. Islamic ideals, when we say Islamic ideals, we mean that there are some uh, qualities that you and I have to have for us, you know, to be a, I mean, to be uh, good Muslims or perfect Muslims. So, I have, you know, some uh, qualities that I uh, put together here, uh, and there are nine. If we try our possible best, 
you know, will be, inshallah, you know, good Muslims. Let us compare between yesterday and today, the people before us, the Muslims, our predecessors, the Muslims that lived before us, you know, how did they do it successfully? How did they maintain that title, the title of Islam? The one that practices Islam is what? It's Muslim. And Islam is the religion that we practice. The people before us, they understood it very well to the extent that, you know, they practicalized it, they applied it. So the first quality, and they are all relationships, you know, I mean, the relationship between you and your Lord, that is number one. What is your relationship? What is your relationship like with your Lord? What is it like? Is it good or bad? You know, if we have to compare, you know, the people before us, especially during the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, companions and the people that came after them, all of them, you know, their relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was good. So the question that we will need to answer later is, you know, how is my relationship with Allah, with my Lord? Number two, let me, let me read everything quickly, then I will, I, will, I will try my possible best to explain everything. Number two, al-Muslimu ma'a nafsi. What is your relationship like with yourself? You know, you know, I mean, people before us, you know, their relationships, you know, with themselves was very good. Number three, al-Muslimu ma'a walidayhi. Muslim, you know, as a Muslim, what is your relationship like with your with your parents are you a good one or bad one you know a few if we have to answer that you know based on uh how the companions and the people and the people that came after them how they lived their life we could say that you know their relationship was good with their parents and also we move to number four the relationship with your spouse how is it like is it good you know, people before us, you know, that, who, I mean, who are our role model, you know, the relationship, you know, I mean, uh, 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 between them, the relationship between them and their spouses uh, was good. And number five, al-Muslim ma'a awladi. You know, Muslim, you know, your relationship with your children has to be good. You know, you have to raise them as Muslims. And also, Al Muslimu ma'a akribai, you know, your relationship with your relatives, your family members, it has to be good. Just like, you know, our predecessors, you know, did, you know, they were very, very successful uh, when it comes to that. They deal, they dealt, you know, with everyone, you know, uh, Islamically. Number seven, Al Muslimu ma'a jirani, how is your relationship like? How is your relationship like, you know, with your neighbors? You know, are you a horrible, terrible, nasty with them, or you? I mean, you're good with them. You know, if we have to compare, you know, the people that lived before us, you know, our role model, uh, their relationship with their neighbors was very good. And uh, number eight, al Muslimu ma ikhwanihi wa astiqaihi. How is your relationship like with your friends? And with your bro brothers. And number nine, Al Muslim Mujtamari. You know, society. How is your relationship like with your society? You know, are you a part of the society? Do you have a good impact, good influence on, on your society? We are, I mean, uh, we are expected to have good impact and good influence wherever we live, wherever we stay, wherever, wherever we are. And people before us, our predecessors, uh, they was when it comes to that they were very very successful. These are the nine relationships that the people before us they lived their life and they were able to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, 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 promised them that He will put them in uh, in the paradise because they were successful in all these nine relationships. 
So how about how about us? You know, those are the uh, so let me start taking them, you know, one by one. Number one, Al Muslimu Ma Rabbi. Muslim, how do we relate with our Lord? How? You know, and under it, you know, I have uh, maybe like um, eight points. Number one, you know, Al Muslim has to be La Buddha and Yakuna Mu'min and Yakivan. You have to be a believer who is spiritually awakened. And when we say, you know, I'm spiritually awakened, you know, it means, you know, uh, a reviver of interest or attention. Maybe your attention was divided, you know, where you were not focusing before. You know, maybe you were not interested in God before. So now you have to try to do what, you know, to be spiritually awakened and focus and live your life, you know, according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in him. In him. You have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly. And your relationship, the, the relationship between you and him has to be very firm and strong. And you have to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also you have to rely on him. Don't rely on your smartness. Don't you re rely on your education. Don't you rely on your certificates, credentials. Don't rely on all, all, all these things. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you always ask him for help to assist you, to support you, because you need it. You know, as you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that doesn't mean that, you know, you will not struggle. You have to go out there and look for a job. That is why, you know, we have to make use of available means to do whatever it is possible for us. You know, for, for example, you know, there is a job there, you know, uh, Amazon is, is employing people and, uh, and, and it's paying like $200,000 in a year. And you say, you know, I will just stay home and I will be praying. No, we have to make sure that, you know, you have your certificates, you know, have, you know, I mean, uh, the, the, the qualification before you start praying. That is why when a companion, when he came to uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to him as he arrived uh, before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, where is your camel? And he said, you know, I left it outside. Then the prophet asked him, did you tie it? He said, no. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will watch over it for me. Then the prophet wasallam said to him, go and tie it. Then after that, you know, you can rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So meaning that, you know, you know, we have to make use of available means. The available means, you know, when it comes to this companion is to do what? To tie it down. Then after that, you know, you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because tying, it, tying your camel doesn't mean that, you know, people will not steal it. But we still have to close our door. You know, then we say Allah is our protection. Allah will protect us. But you leave your door open and you say, you know, Allah will protect you. That is why, you know, we have to uh, make use of available means to do whatever it is possible. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, assist us. So that is our belief. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that belief has to be firm, you know, to the extent that, you know, if people, if anything tries to shake you, you will not shake, you will not be shaken. That means, you know, your, 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 your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very strong and firm. That's uh, number one, under your relationship with your Lord. And number two is what? La Buddha anta kuna anta muti an. You have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we said, you know, don't forget, you know, the, 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 um, the definition of Islam, total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do something, you have to do it. You have to obey Allah. 
when he says don't do something, you have to abstain from it. Refrain, you know, you don't do it. That is not Islamic. You have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing whatever he asks you to do and by staying away from whatever he has, he has declared haram. That is what makes us uh, Muslims. So we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to follow, I mean, obey him, and we have to obey his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's number two. Number three, under our relationship with uh, uh, Allah, is labudda an tash'ura bimas'uliyyatika labudda an tash'ura bilmas'uliyya an ra'iyyatik you have the, the sense I mean, and the feelings of responsibility has to be there. You know, when you, if you, I mean, if you have people under you, you have dependents, you have children, and you have wife, you know, you have to be responsible. It's part of our religion. You have to be, be responsible. The feelings of that responsibility has to be there. And number four, لا بد أن تكون راضياً and you have to be pleased and content with what? With the predestination. Whatever Allah SWT has been predestined, you have to be pleased with it. That's part of our faith. That's what makes us, you know, believers. If we don't do that, you know, you know, during the time of uh, hardship or any misfortune, what do we say as, as Muslims? Inna lillahi wa inna ilah. You know, we belong to Allah and to him we shall return, you know. We accept it. You know, we don't question Allah. We don't query Allah. We don't say, why me? So that negates, you know, the, uh, the true meaning of what? Of Islam and Iman. That is why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the, in the hadith of uh, Suhaib, he says, Ajaban li amri al-mu'min. إن أمره كله خير إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خير له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خير له. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, how wonderful is the case of a believer? Wonderful and it's very very surprising the case of of a believer. Prophet Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you know why? You know, we may ask, and the answer is what? Inna amrahu kullahu khair. There is good for him in everything. Everything about a believer is good. It's always win win. In asobatu, in asobatu, sarra'u shakar fakana khairan lahu. If prosperity attends him, what does he do? He shows and expresses gratitude to Allah. He's grateful. Anything good happens in his life. He's grateful. He's happy. He shows gratitude and he expresses, you know, uh, thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, 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 and that is good for him. What about the opposite? Because this life, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, he created death and life in order to do what? In order to test us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, he will, never, he will not leave us alone. He will continue to test us until he knows those who are faithful. So if you are a teacher, and you have like 20 uh, students in your class, how are you going to decide, you know, who will have A, who will, who will have an A and who will have a B if you don't test them? You have to test them for you to know good students and bad students. That is why Allah SWT will continue to test us. Let me continue this hadith. I just, uh, I digress a little bit. And if adversity befalls him, any misfortune, uh, calamity, you know, if, he, if he's going through some challenges, sober, he will patiently endure it. That's Muslim, you know. It's from Allah. You know, we are the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
so he can do whatever he wants. So, فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ You know, as a result of that patience, what happens, you know? فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ It's better for him. That is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, how wonderful is the case of a believer. You know, it's a win-win. If it's good, he will thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If it's the opposite, he will, he will patiently uh, uh, endure. Then the end result will be what? Will be good for him. So we have to be pleased, you know, with uh, with what the uh, predestination of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and uh, uh, this is story of Urwa. Urwa, uh, I think Urwa ibn Thabit, or I, or I don't remember, but it's Urwa, but I don't I don't remember his last name. You know, uh, her king invited him to come and visit him. And he had, he had to travel from a city to another city. So as he was embarking on that journey, I, th in the I mean, uh, he, uh, he, I mean uh, his son, his last born, accompanied him. So he became tired on his way, I mean, uh, to meet the king. So when he got to the uh, town which uh, the king resides, he became very sick. So when he got to the king, uh, and the king found him that you know he was very sick. He said, you know, go and call me all those you know uh, experts. I mean, expert medical doctors, and all of them they came and they started you know to diagnose. Uh, they started diagnosing this guy, and they found out that you know this scholar, I mean uh, uh, Orwa, uh, he was very very sick. And they said, you know, uh, there's no any option except they amputate you know his uh, one of his uh, feet. So don't forget that, you know, he, I mean, uh, one of his children accompanied him. So because, you know, he was so young, you know, he went out, you know, to uh, watch, you know, the horse race. So when he was watching, accidentally, by mistake, you know, one horse went to that child and he stamped on his head and he died. So uh, they told, I mean, uh, they went to this uh, scholar. Orwa, and they said they said to him that you know we need to have, amputate one of your feet, uh, and uh, we have to um, give you some drugs so that you don't feel you know the pain. And he said you know uh, alcohol is haram. I don't want you know that uh, anything that has uh, alcohol in it. I'm not interested. But you know what? You know I know myself. Just you know let me make ablution. Then you know when I start praying. You can cut whatever you want to cut because when I'm praying, you know, I'm fully concentrated. You know, I'm connecting, you know, I'm, I'm communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't feel anything. Cut it. So he's, I mean, he, he made ablution and he started praying and they cut it. They cut the, I mean, they cut his foot. So he didn't feel anything, but the, the blood started gushing heavily. So until he lost control. So he passed. Then uh, they started, you know, I mean, uh, taking care of him and they were able to revive him. Then after that, they wanted, you know, to give him the news that, you know, Alhamdulillah, the surgery was successful. Now they have to break the news to him now. Now, now they have to break the news to him also that his son has passed. So when they told him that, you know, I mean, uh, the surgery went fine, but unfortunately, you lost your son. And I said, believer, you know what he said? He said, you know, فَإِنْ أَخَذَ فَطَلَمَا أَعْطَى If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking something from me, my son, or my, my food, you know, I, I mean, I've been enjoying a lot of favors, a lot of blessings, bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I mean, I mean, I've been enjoying that, you know, I'm happy with the predestination, with the faith from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, you know, وَإِنْ ibtala فَطَوْلَمَا عَافَ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing me now, you know, I've been enjoying, you know, good health before. So I'm happy. Then he said something, and he said, you know, أَعْطَوْنِي أَرْبَعَةَ أَعْضَى فَأَخَذَ وَاحِدًا مِنْهَا And he said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me 
two hands and he gave me uh, two legs and he's, he's taking only from, he's taking one from four. So one minus four, we still have three left. He said, you know, I have a lot, you know, to be happy about. I have a lot, you know, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he didn't feel bad. That is what you and I should emulate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So, you have to be pleased. You know, don't challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five, you know, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, that, you know, all the sons of Adam, Adam's children, all of them, they are, I mean, they all, they, are, they, they always make mistakes, but the best of them, the best of them are those who, whenever they make mistakes or they commit a sin, they always go back to Allah to repent and to seek for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So awab, you know, we have to have that habit of always going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him, you know, to forgive us our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. And number six, hammuhu mardatillah. We're still under uh, al-Muslim ma'a your relationship between, uh, the relationship between you and your Lord. Hammuhu labudda in yakuna hammuka mardatillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your concern should always be what? To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't try to please your wife. Don't try to please your husband. What you should do rather is what? To try to please Allah. When you try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be able to please your husband and you will be able to please your, your wife. You will be able to please your children. But if you want to please people, if you, if you want to please people, that is unachievable. They say, you know, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is achievable. But to please people is unachievable. You cannot, you, you will just die. Don't try to please people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, the understanding. And number seven, la buddha an to addi al faraib. All what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined upon you, all what He has declared as obligatory, you have to do them. You know, like five daily prayers, zakat, you know, charity, hajj, you have, or whatever Allah SWT has made mandatory, you have to do it. That is why Allah SWT says in the hadith of uh, Hadith Qudsi, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبْ مِمَّا افْتَرَبْتُ عَلَيْهِ There's no way a servant, or let's say, let's say, in, uh, use it in another way. The most beloved thing with which my slave comes nearer to me is what I have enjoined upon him. Whatever I enjoy upon you, that is what I like most. I want you to do it. That is how you can get close to me. If you want to be very, very close to me, just do what I ask you to do. Whatever I have made mandatory and obligatory, do it and add to it also optionals. All those things like nawafil, the sunnah that, that we do after the prayer, do it too. Sodako, it's not, it's, not, it's not a must, but do it because you will need it on the day of resurrection. Number eight is what? Antakuna mutamathilan manil obudiyya. You have to represent the true meaning of what? of being an obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshiping him. You have to represent that good worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is who, I mean, that is what you should represent every time. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create mankind for any reason except for them, you know, to worship me alone. I don't want them to feed me. I don't want them to give me any provision. Just worship me. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Number nine, under our relationship, I mean, the relationship between us and Allah and our Lord is Quran. Can we have to recite Quran? If you don't know how to recite Quran, you are missing a lot. Remember, I mean, this is the manual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you and I and this and the heavens and the earth. 
you know, the manual to live successfully, to live this life successfully, is Quran. We have to know how to recite Quran. That is why, you know, we have to recite Quran every time. Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you know, uh, uh, Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallam is complaining. He says, Ya Rabbi, inna qawmi takhadu hadha al-Quran mahjura. My people, you know, they have boycotted the Quran. You know, they don't read it. And, you know, Ibn Qayyim, you know, he says in his book that, you know, some, I mean, not by not read it, reading it only, by not putting it into practice, by not going back to it, you know, for our healing, you know, by, you know, if we have, if there's problem, you know, between husband and wife, by not allowing, allowing imam, you know, to reconcile between them, you know, if there's any misunderstanding, you know, rather, you know, what they do, they will go to the, I mean, to the court, you know, that is, that means, you know, you are boycotting Quran. So let them use Quran to, I mean, uh, to judge between you and uh, your husband or between you and your wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, the understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innul qulub. By remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our hearts will be at peace. We will have that tranquility. We have that, you know, I mean, the peace of mind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that. So that is that, that was relationship, that was the relationship between us and our Lord. Number two is the relationship between us and ourselves. It's very important. So that is why La Buddha and Takuna Kudwatan Hasana. The first thing that I will say here is, is that you know you have to be a role model. Try to be a good Muslim, try to be a good example for others. For, for, for other Muslims and a good examples and a good example for non-Muslims. You have to be a good example for, no, for non-Muslims. Because if they see that beauty of Islam in you, that is when they will say, you know, that is when they will show interest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. That is that is how you will be able to uh, convey the greatest message of Islam to people. When you are a good role model and people see Islam in you, may Allah SWT make it easy. Uh, so, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said one day to uh, his companions, he said, you know, um, إِنَّكُمْ قَادِمُونَ عَلَىٰ إِخْوَانِكُمْ فَأَصْلِحُوا رِحَالَكُمْ وَأَحْسِنُوا لِبَاسَكُمْ حَتَّى تَكُونُوا كَأَنَّكُمْ شَامَ فِي النَّاسِ كَأَنَّكُمْ شَامَةٌ فِي النَّاسِ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He told the companions He said you, you are coming to your brethren your Muslim brothers you know you are approaching them you know, they were, they were traveling. The companions were traveling. And the Prophet ﷺ advised them. He said, you know, you are approaching your Muslim brothers. So tidy your months, your rides, you know, horses, you know, tidy. Make everything look good. And your dress, tidy your dress until you are like a mole among the people. You know, you have to be the best. You know, you look good. So that is why, I mean, that is the relationship between us and ourselves. We have to look good. We have to be uh, a good representative, a good ambassador of Islam. You know, we have to, we have to uh, 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 approach people. Whenever we, are, we, we approach people, they have to see that uh, beauty of Islam in such a way that they, they, they will be interested in our religion. كيف يحقق المسلم التوازن under here, you know, I will, I mean, discuss three things. When I say, you know, ourselves, we are talking about what? Your body, your, your mind, and your soul. Number one, let's talk about your body. You have to take care of your body. So how do we balance? You know, how do, how do we balance between our bodies, our minds, and our souls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
eat and drink and don't waste. Allah doesn't like the wasteful. So meaning that, you know, we have to be moderate in our food, the way we eat. We don't over, over, overfeed ourselves. We don't overfeed our bodies. And uh, we don't overdrink too. We don't drink alcohol. I'm talking about water or juice. Any, I mean, any halal beverages. Mutajanniban al israf. We don't waste. You eat and drink, and we don't waste. Don't forget that you know the food that we're eating is a favor from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, blessing from Him, and we don't we don't waste food. You know, we always take what we can consume. So whatever is left, you know, you can put it in the fridge. You don't trash anything. You know, we have to take, I mean, we have to get used to that. The habit of not wasting uh, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't overfeed ourselves. That is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَا مَلَ أَبْنُ آدَمَ وِعَاءً شَرٌ مِّن بَطْنِ You know, <laughs> if you want to fill a container, the worst container that you can fill is your stomach. So many, you know, the meaning of this hadith is that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is calling, is encouraging us not to overfeed and overeat and overdrink. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, فَإِذَا كَانَ لَا مَحَالَ If you must eat, then, you know, one third of your stomach, you should, you know, you should use it for what? For food, for eating food. And the one third is what? Uh, is for drinking. And the last uh, one third is for breathing. Because if you eat too much, you will not be able to breathe. And if you, if you don't breathe, you know, you, you, may, you may die. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us. Umar, radiallahu anhu, he advised uh, the companions one day and he said, Be careful of overfeeding, overeating, or overdrinking. You know, it destroys your body. And also, it leads to sickness and disease. And also, you know, you will not be able to pray. You'll you be lazy and you will not be able to rise to pray. So be careful of that. Then he says, he said at the end, we, You have to be moderate in what you eat and in what you uh, drink, what you consume. And also about our body. We have to, we don't over, overfeed, we don't overeat, that's number one. Number two, we have to do muzawalatu al-riyadha. We have to exercise. Exercise is very, very important. So that is why Professor Law Alaihi Wasallam, you know, is a good role model. He used to exercise even with his wife, Aisha. They would do, they would, they would do competition, you know, together, you know, I mean, uh, in... Uh, um, Running. So then uh, number three, jismi. We have to look good, neat. Prophet he used to like what? You know, perfume, nice smell. Prophet used to love it so much. And he, you will look good, you know, you take shower, you know, you take I mean you take bath every day. That is why some scholars they even say that you know, if you don't take shower every day, at least on Friday, you must take shower. In the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Hakuna la kulli Muslimin and Yartesila, Fi kulli Sabati ayam in Yoman, Yartesilu fihi, Yarsilu fihi Rasavu wa Jesada. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, you know, it's a must for, for every Muslim to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to bath in every seven days, at least once, I mean, uh, once, and you, I mean, you wash your head and you wash uh, uh, your body entirely. Aisha radiallahu anha, he said, you know, in the hadith, uh, I mean, he reported that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam kana la yarqudu laylan aw naharan. He will not sleep at night. And he will not even take a nap during the day. And he woke up, and he, and he would wake up, illa tasawwa, illa tasawwa, except that, you know, he washed his mouth. The first thing, you know, when he sleep, whenever he slept at night, when he woke up, the first thing that he would do is to wash his mouth. Even if, if he's taken, if Professor Salam, I mean, would take a nap, whenever he woke up, he will first wash, 
uh, his mouth before uh, he makes uh, ablution. Prophet sallallahu in his hadith, he says, لَوْلَا أَنَا شُقُّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَا أَمَرْتُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ إِنْ دَا كُلِّ صَلَىٰ Because I don't want, I want ease for you. I want to make it, I don't want to make it difficult for you. If not, I would have made it obligatory for you to, uh, to wash your mouth every time you want to pray. To show you that Prophet sallallahu was very clean and he was very, very concerned about uh, hygiene. And one day Aisha was asked, the uh, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's wife, he, she was asked, and Ayy Shayin Yabdaw Bihir Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ida Dakhala Beta. What what is the first thing that the Prophet Sallam will do whenever you know he uh, uh he comes home, he arrives, I mean uh, uh and whenever he gets home, then the Aisha said, As siwak, the first thing that he would do is to wash uh, his mouth, sallallahu. Alayhi wasallam. That is why Prophet Muhammad sallam in the hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, he said, you know, man kana lahu sha'arun fal yukrimuhu. Whoever, you know, has, you know, hair on his head, he should treat it properly. You know, comb it, you know, uh, cream it, and uh, and also, uh, I mean, let it, you know, uh, look good. You know, don't let it look, look rough. It's not Islamic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, the understanding uh, number two, after, you know, I mean, talking about ourselves, you know, we said, you know, our body, that's number one. Number two is aqluhu, you know, your mind. Al-ilmu inda al-Muslim fariratun wa sharaf. We have to realize that, you know, our mind, our brain, we have to use it properly. That is why we have to learn. We have to study. We have to seek for, for, for knowledge. That is why knowledge upon Muslims is a must. You have to seek for knowledge, especially beneficial knowledge that will help you in this life and in the hereafter. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. You know, you, what you will store here in your mind and in your, in your brain is what? Beneficial knowledge. That's why he says, you know, Talabul ilmi, seeking knowledge is what? Is a must for every Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you know, talking about the, I mean, the, about the virtues of the scholars. People who can uh, uh, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who have knowledge, the scholars, because they can, they can open the Quran and, and they will be able to understand it very well. That is why, you know, they are the, uh, they are, they are the people who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that, I mean, uh, on that how we how we treat our mind and our brain, you know, yambaghi, uh, that is why, yambaghi an na'alam anna talab al-ilmi mustamirrun hatta al-mamat. Knowledge seeking continues till we die. It doesn't stop. We have to keep looking and seeking for beneficial knowledge. That is why Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he never asked Allah SWT to increase him in anything except knowledge. That's why Allah SWT says in the Quran, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Allah SWT asked him, always say and ask me, say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So we have to say that too. Oh, my Lord, you know, increase uh, me in knowledge. Prophet Sallam never asked Allah to increase him in anything except to increase him in knowledge. And uh, after that, you know, ما ينبغي للمسلم إتقانه What do you have to know? What do you have to put in your brain, you know, your mind, you know, how do you treat it, you know? You treat your mind and your brain by uh, memorizing Quran, you know, by always reciting Quran, by reading the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then after that, you know, you have to be an expert in the certain field, maybe in geology or in engineering, you know, that's part of it too. You know, you go to school and you study, you major in, 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 some, in, in a certain field and you have to be very, very good in it. That is why in the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
in Allah yuhibbu ahadukum idha amila amalan an yutqina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes, you know, whenever we lay our hand on something, we have to perfect it. So you go to school, you know, you get your bachelor's, you know, try to get, a try to further, you know, and get your master's. After master's, get PhD, be the best in whatever you, you do. That is how, you know, we should, uh, uh, we should uh, treat our brain. We have to be the best in everything that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Then after that, you know, you open windows, you know, to uh, order, I mean, to, to, uh, to order knowledge outside of your field. You have to read everything. You know, let's say, you know, you, you major in geology, read other things, you know. You major in Islamic studies, read other things, you know, so that, you know, your brain will be uh, very, very wide. Then, you know, that's, I mean, we said, you know, when it comes to uh, our, our body, when it, when it comes to, you know, our relationship, I mean, the relationship between us and our, and our, and our body, we said, you know, our, I mean, we have to treat our body, you know, we have to take care of our bodies. Number two, what about our, I mean, what, I mean, our relationship, you know, the relationship between us and our brains and our, our minds. Number three, our souls. As you take good care of your body and you take good care of your brain by majoring in something that will benefit you and hereafter, you know, any, anything. You know, it could be engineering. The most important, you know, is for you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. As you do that, كذلك يدرك أن له قلبا. You know, you have to realize that, you know, you have what? Soul. And that soul, you have to sharpen it. Al-ibadah. You have to dedicate it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By always being uh, mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by always realizing that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala night and day. So that, you know, every time you will be awake and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if nobody sees you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقُوا إِذَا مَسَّهُمُ, إذا مسهم الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ Those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we all, all of us, we're not perfect. Sometimes, you know, shaitan, the devil, will win the race. You know, he will, you know, he will win, you know, because we're always fighting, you know, with shaitan. Sometimes, you know, if, I mean, if shaitan wins, those who are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they go back quickly. They return quickly, you know. They, I mean, uh, they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quickly and they say, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't allow shaitan. The moment, you know, they find out that the shaitan is winning already, what do they do? For example, you know, you're getting angry. Then they say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. That A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, he will, that, that will kiss shaitan away. That's those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Jadidu imanakum, renew your faith. Then the companion, they ask, Ya Rasulullah, how do we renew our faith? Then Prophet answered by saying, min qawli la ilaha illallah. Always say la ilaha illallah. When we say there is no God worthy of worship, it's like you're reminding yourself the contract that you have signed, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't allow uh, the shaitan to win the race. You know, you always, you know, uh, uh, listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages you to have patience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Wal Muslimu yasta'inu ala taqwiyati ruhihi wa islahi nafsihi bi dhurubi min al ibadah. You have to help your soul by always engaging in the, on all kinds of acts of worship. You know, even, you know, you being nice to your wife is an act of worship. You taking care of your household is an act of worship. You know, helping people back home, you know, uh, uh, extended family and nuclear family, you know, it's an act of worship. Anything that is why, you know, anything that you do with the intention of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be rewarded. In the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallam, even, you know, the companion, they said, in, then the Prophet sallam said, you know, even if you are having, 
uh, intimate uh, relationship with your wife, Allah SWT will reward you. Then the companion said, you know, Ayati Ahaduna Shahwata. Okay, I mean, one of us, you know, will do something that he enjoys, that he likes to do, and he will be rewarded. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, yes, of course, <laughs> he will be rewarded. You know, what about, you know, if he's doing it haram, if he's haram, if he's, if he's doing it illegally, Allah, I mean, he will commit sin. So the same thing, you know, I mean, if he's not, I mean, if, he, if he's doing it right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward every one of us. That is why, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, our intentions are good. Then, under our souls, you know, we have, to choose, we have to choose the right people to mingle with. Good friends, companions, peer pressure, all these, you know, they matter. If care is not taken, you know, they will, uh, they will affect us negatively, and we don't want that to happen, you know. So our flock, the people that, you know, we hang out with, they have to be better than us. If they're not better than you, they don't encourage you, you know, to increase in faith, in your iman, in the level of your iman, those are not good friends for you. Or, you know, both of you, you are working together, you know, to achieve the same goal. That is good too. But the friends that will be discouraging you, that will be taking you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are not good friends. We have to be very, very careful. Number three, I said in the beginning, relationship between you and your Lord. How is it like? Number two, relationship between you and yourself. How is it like? You know, I just, I just finished it now. Now we're going to number three. You know, you as a Muslim, as a believer, what is your relationship like with your parents? Mm, this is very, very... It's very hard. We have to realize that, you know, without them, we're nothing. They suffered a lot and a lot. And I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I have enough time, you know, to prove every point that I, that, I, uh, that I have here. But we have to remember that, you know, they suffered a lot. One of uh, our predecessors uh, narrated that, you know, one guy, you know, was uh, doing tawaf, circumambulating around the Kaaba. And he was carrying his mom on his back. You know, he was carrying his mom as he was doing the, I mean, I mean the, uh, the, the seven runs. When he finished, he went to one scholar and he said, you know, Atara, atarani to ummi. Do you think, you know, I have uh, rewarded my, my uh, I have paid my mom back? Then the scholar said, you know, Wala surkhatan wahida. You know? What you just did now is good. It's an act of worship. You know, you are trying to pay back, but, you know, it's not, it's not there yet. It's not even close. You know, when she was, uh, um, I mean, when she was laboring, she made a lot of screams on that day. Screams, you know, according, I mean, that's, the, I mean, the literary uh, translation, you know, screams. You know, maybe like 100 screams. What you just did now is not even up to one scream of that day. So it's nothing compared to what uh, she uh, what she went through because of you. So that is why we have to. There's no way, you know. Oh Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, erhamhuma, show mercy on them, reward them abundantly. You know, the way they were nice to me when I was younger. You know, some scholars, they said that translation is not good. You know, they said, you know, be, I mean, uh, reward them abundantly and show, uh, have mercy on them. Have mercy on them because they were the one who brought me up. That is a good translation. They were the one, they were the reason of my existence after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to, we don't, we don't, I mean, whatever they, they, they ask us to do, we have to do it. If it is, if, if it if, if it doesn't clash with what with uh, obedience of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, if they, if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I mean, uh, if you want to pray and our parents say, our parent, this, one of them says, don't pray, we cannot do that. You know, if they want to want you to do something 
that is not Islamic by associating partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot obey them. Instead, you obey Allah by not associating partner. You know, because after Allah, you know, number one is Allah. After Allah, become our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. Number, I mean, we have to know their, I mean, their, their value. What, I mean, what is the value of our parents? We have to know it. That's number two. We have to be kind and nice to them. That is what Allah SWT will say in the Quran. You know, Allah SWT, after Allah SWT has made it clear that, you know, we have to be dutiful and we have to obey him. After that, Allah SWT says, you know, you know, be kind to your parents. It's like Allah SWT is begging us to be kind to our parents. Because Allah SWT knows that, you know, no matter how, no matter how much you love your parents, the moment you get married, that love, you know, has been divided. That is why Allah SWT is reminding us, you know, don't forget them. Because of your wife or because of your husband, you should not forget your parents. It's part of our, it's part of our religion. That, I mean, this is part of what makes us Muslim. كثير الخوف من عقوقهما لابد أن تكون كثير الخوف من عقوقهما. You have to fear a lot not to disobey them. We don't want to disobey uh, our, our parents. We don't want them, you know, to curse us. We don't want them to be unhappy because of, you know, our our characters. So we have to uh, be very very mindful of that. Quran says, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Do not say, fie on you, nor rebuke them. You cannot, you know, you know the, the, the least you can do is to say, his. And they, 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 I mean, even though you try your possible best, you know, for them not to hear, and that is haram in Islam. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا you don't yell, you don't scream, you don't yell at them, you don't rebuke them. That is haram in Islam. So all of us, you know, whoever has done that, I mean, whoever had done that in the past, and you remember that, you need to call your parent today or tomorrow and ask them, you know, to forgive you. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. And if you have, they have passed, you have to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to be nice to their friends. People that you know that your parents used to like, you know, you, be, you try to be nice to them. And we hope that Allah SWT will use that, you know, to forgive us all our sins. In order, you have to be nice to, the, to, to your mother, then your father. Because our, our Prophet Muhammad Sallam said it three times before he mentioned the father. Then, albiru bi ahli wudihima. You know, if they are, if, I mean, no. Whoever your parents like, you have to like them. I mean, the, the people that your parents like, they have to be your friends too, especially after they have, after their demise. That is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Abarul birri an yasila arrojulu wudda abihi." The finest act of goodness is the kind treatment of a person. So the loved one of the of the father after his death, the father or the mother, the loved one of your father, you have to uh, be kind to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding. Here, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, I emphasize on uh, three things, you know, our relationship between us and our Lord, the relationship between us and our and ourselves. And the relationship between us and our and our uh, parents. So I will not try to uh, emphasize on number four. Al Muslimu ma azawdatihi. I will Muslima tu ma azawjiha. The relationship you as a female Muslim, your relationship with your husband, you as a male Muslim, your relationship with your wife. I will not emphasize on that because, you know, I think I'll have another lecture with you about that topic. 
So we should delay that, you know, till that day, inshallah. Uh, number five, al Muslim ma'a awladihi. What is your relationship like with your children? Are you raising them to be good Muslims? Or you don't care? It's just about this Western education, you know, secular education. You don't care about, you know, you know that, you know, you will regret. If you don't do that, you will regret. Do you know that, you know, if you don't do that, you know, they will not be useful for you on the day, I mean, uh, in, the, in the future. But when you try to let them understand religion, you know, you treat them, you know, in an Islamic way, they will be useful them, to themselves. And even to you and the society at large. And they will not get in trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy. That is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an rayyatihi. You are the father. The father and the head of the, of the household, you will be held accountable about your household. How did how, how did you do it? Allah, you, Allah will hold you accountable. You know, you have to make sure that, you know, you take good care of them. That is part of the task of you being, you know, uh, a believer and Muslim before that. Al-Muslim ma aqribaihi. Muslim, how is your relationship like with your uh with your family members, your relatives, you know, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, you know, man arada an yubsatu lahu fi rizqihi wa yunsa alahu fi ajali fal yasul rahim You know, one of the uh, common mistakes that we do is like, you know, when we get to America here, you know, we stay away, you know, we don't want to have anything to do. Some of us, I'm not generalizing. We don't have, we don't want to have anything to do with our family. We don't know that we are affecting ourselves. Prophet says that, you know, if you want Allah to bless your hustle, your work, you know, your source of income, and also, and you want to have longevity, you want to live long, Prophet says, you know, you should try to be nice to your relatives. You know, bond, you know, the family, you know, be nice to them. They deserve more than other people. If you have $100 and you want to donate it and you have a family member who is suffering, send it to him. Don't give it to an, don't give it to an, an, uh, to an uh, uh, outsider. You know, they deserve it more than, you know. So be nice to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy for us. Al-Muslim ma'a jirani, what about neighbor? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that, you know, لَيْسَ minna مَنْ لَا يَأْمَنُ جَارُهُ uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I don't remember the, the actual, I mean, uh, um, the, the actual text of the, of, I mean, uh, the, the actual narration of the hadith, how, I mean, I don't, I don't remember, this is the meaning. So, who, uh, whoever that his neighbors are not safe, they're not comfortable with him, it's not a true believer. Professor Allah says that you know if they cannot be they cannot feel safe when they are out, they, they, they fear you because you're horrible. You know a ni nice person, you're nasty. If you're if you're like that, you know, you know you are not a true believer. You have to be a good ambassador of Islam, good representative. That's why we said in the beginning that you have to be a role model, you know, uh, in such a way that you know when, when I mean, even if they don't know our religion, they would they will ask one day, you know. What's your religion? You are different. Then we will tell them, you know, we are uh, we are Muslims. Al Muslimu ma ikhwanihi wa astiqaihi with your friends. Laysa Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Laysa minna man lam yahtamma fi umur al Muslimin. Your Muslim brothers, whoever doesn't care about the affairs of his Muslim brothers or his Muslim sisters is not one of us. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, you know, your friends. Your Muslim brothers, you know, how is your relationship with them? All these things, you know, we have to. And number nine, you know, ma'amujtama'ihi. You know, what is your relationship like with your society? Are you a good Muslim? Are you a good role model? Do people, I mean, look up to you? You know, I mean, if they have any problem, do they feel safe, you know, to come and uh, seek advice from you? If you, are, if you are not like that, you know, 
you better try to your possible best, you know, to be like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So this is the uh, uh about the topic. The topic is what I Islamic ideals. You know, see nine, nine things. We have to one by one, you know, we have to check all those relationships. If we are going in that, mashallah. And the Muslim today, okay, what about the Muslim today? Unfortunately, we do opposite of that. We are Muslims by name, but we are not Muslim to our characters. We are different, opposite of that. We go to, I mean, we start from number one, our relationship with our, with our, with our Lord. It's horrible, it's not good. That's why, you know, the people before us, they're different. You know, with their faith, they were able to move mountain. But us, you know, we are, we're not faithful. We're different. Everything is about money, 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 dunya, 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 dunya. And we're dying. Every day that passes, you know, we are approaching our grave. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are different. Muslim of nowadays, they are different. They are different. It is uh, a street in California. They said, you know, it's full of Muslims. And you know what? You know, the Muslims, they, the, the Muslims occupy that street. And most of them, they sell alcohol. They have shops there, they sell alcohol. One guy, you know, he was talking to his friend about Islam and he was telling them that, you know, in Islam, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't smoke and we don't drink alcohol. And the white man said, you know, what do you mean? You know, what about this street, you know? It's full of Muslims and they sell alcohol. So Islam is something and Muslims are something else these days. And unfortunately, it shouldn't be like that. That is why we have to explain to people that, you know, the true is Islam. But Muslims of nowadays, they are not true. Even Imam, even me that I'm talking, we have to go back to Quran and Hadith before we can find truth, before we can find the truth. Because Imam, maybe because Imam also, you know, uh, it's, I mean, the, the topic that we're talking about now, you know, that is the, I mean, uh, that is uh, his weakness. They will try sometimes, you know, uh, you know, to manipulate and to play games, you know. That's not truth. Quran, so we have to go back to Quran and Hadith. Quran and Hadith, Quran and Hadith, they are the truth. But the way we practice Islam, that's not true. Because now, I mean, unfortunately, whatever we do is what non-Muslims consider as Islam. And nowadays, we cannot say that now. People before us, you know, you can be rest assured. Whatever they do, people say, you know, that is Islam. So that's why, you know, um, one of uh, Sheikh, uh, his name is Abdul. He said, you know, I went to the West. I saw there, I saw Islam there when I went to the West. You know, he came from, uh, from the East, from one of those Arab Arabian countries. He said, you know, I went to the I, I, I went to the West and I saw Islam there, but I didn't see Muslims there. Meaning, you know, the West Western people, you know, the way they do their things, they are very close to Islam, even though they are not Muslims. Then I returned to the Sharq. Then when I came back to the East, because if I mean the guy is from East, to Muslimina walakin lam ajid Islaman. I came back to the West, I mean, to the East. I saw Muslims, mashallah, but unfortunately, I did not see Islam. What does that mean? You know, that's telling us that, you know, we are far away from Islam. What I mentioned, number one, number two, all, all the way to number nine. I mean, <laughs> those are Islam. But we, we don't represent Islam, unfortunately. Uh, Imam Malik, he said that, you know, if we want if we want to be successful, we have to go and check how the people before us, how did they do it before we can be successful when it comes to our Islam, our Iman. I'm about to finish, inshallah, only one or two minutes. So, okay, why the, dis why the disparity? Because, you know, we don't live, you know, I mean, uh, we don't... <laughs> We don't obey Allah. Instead, we disobey Allah. We're not ready, you know, to live according to Quran and Sunnah. That's why, you know, we are, I mean, we're in this mess. Okay, what, okay, let's talk about the solution quickly. Three things. 
I hope, inshallah, they will uh, stand a solution, you know, to our problem, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah la yugayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not fix your situation for you until you're ready to change. Change first. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change our situation. But we, you know, you continue to do that sinful act. Something that you know that is haram, you continue to do it, and you want Allah to change. You know, why don't you uh, repent and stay away from that sin? Then, you know, pray to Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your prayer. The first solution, Allah will Quran wa sunnah. Let's go back to Quran and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the authentic, authentic hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There we'll find, you know, solution to our problems. Number two, let us hold firmly and strongly to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we shouldn't, according to Quran, we shouldn't be divided. We have to be united as one body. You know, until we do that, you know, we we'll continue to suffer as what? As, uh, uh, as Muslims. Number three, Adam dunya wahdaha. We don't ask Allah SWT to give us only dunya, only, only life, you know. We are just asking Allah for worldly things. Allah SWT says in the Quran, فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ رَبَّنَا فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقِ You know, among, the, among people, those who we say, among people, those who we say, you know, oh Allah, give us what? You know, give us, you know, I mean, uh, and let us enjoy this life. Then on the day of resurrection, they will have no portion of enjoyment. They will not be, they will not be able to go to paradise. So because, you know, we only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to live, to live a good life. We don't combine the two. Because after the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaba na. Give us goodness in this life and the hereafter. If we can combine the two, we'll be fine. If we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us, you know, to live, I mean, uh, to, 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 uh, to be among the dwellers of, of paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed will allow us to live a good life and also to uh, live a good life in the hereafter. Uh, this is the end of it. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammadin wa sallim. Now. Jazakumullah <laughs> khairan. Shukran jazeelan. So we'll call on to our imam to make a dua for uh, our imam. Uh, uh, Hussein Adiatu, we really enjoy this topic. I mean, I know an hour, you know, cannot really do justice to this topic. So, um, inshallah, you know, we would like to bring you on again to continue to expand on this uh, this topic that is really dear to each and every one of us. As you can see, we are so quiet. And um, before we jump into any question, and you know, we don't have that much time for question. But what I will ask is um, our members to hold on to their questions and perhaps. Uh, they can ask uh, Imam those questions right after this. We pray.